Okay, so uh, this is day 68 of the 100 day challenge, my 39th day. Um, <coughs> I've already practiced doing this video twice. I've spent the last half hour talking to a screen where the meter wasn't bouncing. The first time, it was a legitimate mistake. I forgot to turn on my mic. The second time I checked to make sure that I was getting a signal. But then as I got talking, I stopped watching that. When I hit record, it must have stopped. Anyway, I just restarted my um, audio engine, it's called, in voice meter, and bang, I got it back. So just some kind of fluke mistake. And here I am doing it a third time. So um, it'll probably be the shortest of the three. Lucky you. Okay, so I'm doing another Zen guitar um, summary. One day maybe I'll get better at like figuring out how to get that in the camera. Um, and we're in a section about practice and there's 12 points of focus where uh, the third point of focus is technique. Now, it's only one page long and you can see that I have highlighted almost the whole thing. So, you know, a highlight is, is like when something stands out. So how do you highlight something? If, if you color the whole thing, it's just now it's a different color. It's not highlighted. <laughs> anyway, so Pat Martino said, the music has generated all the techniques I use. When I sit down to, to learn to play something, it is not because I want to master a technique. It is because I want to hear what an idea sounds like. So then uh, Phil, the, our author, goes on to say, some teachers build entire programs around the acquisition of technique. Without question, technique is essential to know. But in Zen guitar, the acquisition of technique for its own sake is not the path to musicianship. The expression is the thing. Now, by necessity, we all must spend time practicing our technique. Okay, he come, keeps coming back to say that. But one's focus, one's main focus should always be on playing with the proper spirit. And he makes an interesting comment. Sometimes a player with crude technique has more to say than a player with impeccable technique. And, and that's a very different way. Whose song is more uplifting? That's a very different way that, of saying what I've said many times about how some people, they don't know much on the guitar, but they, they come up with really cool songs or do really, you know, interpret cover songs do them really nice it just sound really good and I've been playing the guitar a long long time and I still sound like a beginner um, and I just so much of the technique that I've learned in almost three years on tack I haven't employed and applied in songs that I play or songs that I write although I'm getting better slowly but surely but Acquire only the technique you need and no more. That is the way of Zen guitar. So now I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about this technique that you might argue that I don't know. I make the A chord with my index finger in the middle and the two other fingers around it. And I, it makes it very easy to play the D and the E chords. And I mentioned that I wanted to try playing with my middle ring and pinky finger. Now, here is a D chord. Barred on the fifth fret. Now, no more technique than I need. Well, but, but you need technique to give yourself more ideas. There's more expression. Okay, so here we have in the key of D, we have our two minor, E minor, F sharp minor is our three minor, our four major, 
one step away because there's only one half step between the third degree and the fourth degree. Your five major, A. Your six minor, B. All all rooted on on the sixth string, and then and then the 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 one chord, the one major chord, right there below me. And and so bar chords open up the door to two things. I can create staccato rhythmic technique muting by releasing my fingers because I've got a finger across all the strings. So I can completely mute the guitar or the create different effects, different expression. The other thing is get a very cool slide effect. With with bar chords. So, um, not too long ago I learned the song by the Beatles and I love her. Um, there's an E6. Now you can't play that with your middle ring and pinky because you need that pinky to make, to fret that C sharp. That's what makes it the E6. Now they play the verses going back and forth between the F sharp minor and the C sharp minor. That would be your two minor and your six minor. Yeah. And then they play a bridge between your three minor, G sharp minor, and C sharp minor, and six minor. You can hear there's not as much contrast between the G sharp minor and the six sharp minor because they're in this the same area on the fret board as there is between the F-sharp and the C-sharp in this voicing. So, I give her all my love, it's all I do. And if you saw my love, only three times back and forth, F-sharp, C-sharp minors. And then, A, you love her, B, two. That's the four major and the five major, and then back to the E minor as a resolution. Those are your verses, and then then uh, there was that that bridge I talked about, and then at the end they modulate up one half step and re replay the third verse instead of F sharp. It's G. So F sharp. C sharp, now it's G, D, and instead of A, it's B flat, and instead of B, it's C, and then dropping down, instead of an E, it's an F. So they play the entire verse exactly the same, up one fret. And so it almost seems like a song that was written for somebody that was trying to get learn their bar chords or get better at their bar chords or take advantage of bar chords somehow anyway. The only thing in the whole song that's not bar chords is the resolution, is, is the chord that they resolve to. Anyway, just fascinating. So there you have it, uh, uh, Zen Guitar's idea of technique and some things that I'm working on to uh, gain greater technique so that I can express new ideas and have 
new expressions of, of sound. Mm -hmm.